Hi guys, I'm Shmi and welcome today to sunny Spain and welcome in particular to the new McLaren 570S Spider. The Spider is the fourth member of McLaren's sports series, the cars that are more usable, more everyday, more obtainable than their Super Series platform. So the sports series started with the 570S Coupe a couple of years ago, followed up by the 540C in the same shape, then the 570 GT, the Grand Tourer with the folding rear hatch for extra luggage space, a slightly soft the ride, easier steering and a quieter exhaust note and now the fourth member of the family, the 570S Spider. that today we're going to take a full look around, a walk around outside and in before going for a test drive to see what the new McLaren convertible is like out on the roads. So this is the second car as part of McLaren's Track 22 program, introducing 15 new models from last year through to 2022. So we had the 720S as the first introduction, we have the 570S Spider as the second. The 720S sits in the Super Series, the sort of class above, if you could call it that, and then above that still, you have the Ultimate Series with more projects coming in the future. But today is going to be all about the Sports Series, and in particular, this Sicilian Yellow 570S Spider behind me. So let's have a better look and a walk around of the new Spider and talk a little bit more about it. So very much as the name suggests, 570 for 570 horsepower, it pretty much mimics the setup of the coupe. So you've got the 3.8 litre twin turbo V8 that we can actually hear in this car driving past right now. Sounds good there with the sports exhaust. So it has the 3.8 litre twin turbocharged V8 rear mid engined, mated with the seven speed dual clutch gearbox. Visually, very, very similar to the coupe with the exception of the roof. It has a folding hardtop that folds back here into the rear buttresses. I'll demonstrate and show you a lot more about that in a moment, but just look at the way it's sort of designed. You can have it finished with the dark palladium. You can have it in body color. You can have the carbon fiber central section here over the top of that rear engine that's sort of sat deep down in there, but it looks really, really nice. And they had a lot of sort of, I guess, pressure to make this a good looking car. There was a lot of anticipation for it and it very much does exactly what it sort of says on the tin. Now, from a performance perspective, one thing that's quite interesting is how close this matches the coupe performance numbers. Nought to 62 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour is still 3.2 seconds. Nought to 200 kilometers an hour or 124 miles per hour is just 0.1 seconds slower at 9.6 instead of 9.5. Top speed is matched evenly. There's an eight mile an hour penalty if you have the roof down, but if you've got it up, it's exactly the same at a touch over 200 miles per hour. So this car is very nicely specced. We've got the sports exhaust as well to enjoy while we're driving. But as you can see looking around, if you haven't sort of seen much of the sports series before, it's designed with downforce, with aerodynamics, but to introduce a bit more fun as well as more usability to the McLaren lineup. So if I come round, it's based on the Monocell 2 platform, which when introduced, if I uh, open the door here to show you this, the door's opening upwards and outwards, is the carbon fiber base tub that sits in here. So it had a lower entry here, making it easier to get in and out or ingress and egress from the car than the previous uh, sort of models, the 12C, the 650S, and then the 675 LT. The doors open in sort of a narrower spectrum and narrower gap, so they don't need quite so much space um, beside them and making again the entry get to be a little bit easier um, than it was before but it's still very similar to the coupe. One difference while I'm thinking about it is the rear lip spoiler. So it's slightly extended upwards to give it a little bit more downforce. Obviously the change in aerodynamics over the car without having the roof requiring a little bit more of a sort of plant to the rear end. But everything basically very much as we know, it's got the active dynamics panel on the inside. I'll jump in again in a moment just to show you a little bit more. But while we're out here talking about aero, look at the way the sort of air sort of funnels down the side of the car and is channeled into these two in takes. The door itself has this whole sort of hollowed out area with the uh, button to open it being on the underside just here. Press that and it pops and um, opens up, revealing sort of everything on the inside. This car has a very nice Bauer and Wilkins sound system, which I can tell you sounds really rather good. And if I come round to the front while the doors are open, they just look and scream supercar, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. And this car also has a decent amount of luggage space in the front that I'll show you later on as well. You can't see much of the engine under that rear hatch. But one thing you can do with the key here, if you double press, it will pop the doors for you, which also have soft close if you drop them down 
they'll pull in quite neatly as well. But let's open that up, see the car with both doors open, which just looks cool. I think that's what a supercar should be, right? That is how it should look. But let us jump in here for a second, climb in. This car has the optional sports bucket seats, making the drive even more awesome. Gonna take a seat in here where we're greeted by the digital display and screen in front of us. Again, similar to the previous cars I've driven, the 570S, the 540C, and the 570 GT before. But to start it, you have keyless with the button here in the center on the Active Dynamics control panel, start engine. So let's fire it up. Sports exhaust coming into life. You have the floating display here, the sort of tablet, if you could call it that, with all the sort of navigation and media and controls and entertainment. This is a speaker, by the way, in case you're wondering, part of the Bowers and Wilkins setup. But everything works very efficiently, effectively, as you sort of would hope and expect it to do so. If I pull the doors down here, you've got a sort of flap right here for a water bottle or for some stowage, actually larger than you think, closed with the flap so that when you open the doors, it doesn't just fall straight out. The door itself, you open with this lever here at the front um, to pull that up. And as you can tell, it's pretty warm today. The screen is showing 32 degrees, so it's very much spider weather. Uh, have the wind in the hair and enjoy it and see what it's about. So another cool little sort of trick feature is if you have the roof up, I just jump out quickly so we can see this properly later on. But if the roof is out of the rear buttress, you can actually press these buttons here to open the tonneau storage cover and use that as 52 litres of luggage space. So that works rather neatly. Just coming around the back, you can hear that rumble, burble from the twin turbo V8. But I think that's probably enough looking around for the moment. I'm going to jump in, take it for a drive and see what the cars are like out on the roads here. I'm surrounded by some wonderful roads to enjoy driving, so I'm looking forward to this one and I'll let you know what it's like. So let's jump back in and get on the road. Nice way to get started with the roof down on a day as lovely as today and with a road in front of me that I know is going to be epic. Now this is what driving a spider, a convertible, is all about. Having the wind in your hair, the extra noise of the exhaust, opening yourself up to sort of the environment around you and just feeling more at one, I guess, with the road. And the spider has been a pretty popular one for McLaren. Out of the 11,000 cars they've made so far, 4,000 of them have been spiders. That's quite a high number because with this carbon tub, you don't lose much by way of the rigidity. The car retains its control, its grip. Yes, there's a small weight penalty. In this instance, about 46 kilos, taking the weight of the car to 1,359 kilos, which is still a tiny number in the grand scheme of things for a convertible supercar with a V8. That is next to nothing. Now, from a price point of view, the coupe version is 143,000 pounds. This has about a 10% uplift, so you're talking high 150s, under 160 for the base spec. In the 570S, that gets you carbon ceramics. Uh, the 570S coupe and Spider both with carbons. The 570 GT and the 540C have regular brakes, but I've driven all of the cars before, so I've got a pretty good understanding of this range. And one of my favorite things is the turn-in. The way it just grips and goes, the steering feel is magical. Now, this car doesn't have the sort of fancy suspension setup of the Super Series, but it still has a brilliant, brilliant suspension. The way it rides over the small bumps works great. And just driving like this, generally, I'm in the full normal, automatic, regular, normal, normal on the Active Dynamics panel. I haven't changed anything. It just cruises along in such a nice way. But I think it would be appropriate to press Active and enable that Active Dynamics panel, where on the left side, I've got Sport selected for the handling. And on the right side, I've also got Sport selected for the powertrain, and I've got it in manual. So I'm in sixth gear right now, where I'm not getting very much. But you have normal sport and track uh, on both sides, so you can configure the car and set it up how you like it. Now in manual, let's just pull a sort of paddle and go down a few gears here, some of that sports exhaust system. And one thing to talk about is that click you get from the shifters. So just like all McLarens so far, as you pull the gear, you hear the click. That's sort of like the secondary pull, because you can half pull it with a rocker system that will prepare the gearbox, prepare the seven-speed double clutch box to take that next gear when you give it that final pull, basically making shifts lightning quick, instantaneous response. Now, like I said before, braking, very solid from the carbon ceramics, but let's just put the foot down for a moment and experience up to the red line where it is quick. This car is really, really fast. Make no mistake about it, more than enough performance to 
if you could basically ever need. And there's a lot of wind noise, that's for sure, from having the roof down. Lots of buffeting going on up there. But it's the feeling, it's the excitement that comes from driving a spider. And if you're wondering, by the way, why spiders? Spider was named um, when you had horse-drawn carriages. The spider was the lighter one back then. So in the UK, spider is the name for the cars with an I. Uh, in Germany, spider is spelled with a Y. But this is the 570S spider. Random fact for you there. But driving along in this mode, like I said before, the steering feel is great. The noise is really good too. There's lots of sort of crackles and burbles. And when you lift off, you get a sort of little backfire almost from it from that optional lightweight uh, sports exhaust system with more sound. Um, you have different exhausts on the different variations of the cars, but that's what it's about, this experience, driving with the roof down. So let's just uh, slow it down for a moment. Sort of think from the inside, it's much the same as 570S Coupe, you know, it hasn't really changed. Why would it need to? You've got a lovely display in front of you, giving you all sorts of information, um, your temperatures, your tyre pressures, all your usual sort of trip side of things. Fortunately, you can go for a little overtake here. Um, everything you need uh, is right there, right in front of you. It doesn't have that sort of folding display that we saw in the 720S. And by the way, do check out the 720S video to see basically what McLaren are capable of when they put their minds to it fully and want to create a completely epic car. We're going into a corner quite quickly. It turns in beautifully. You've got a lot of feedback back through the wheel, a lot of sort of grip and just sense of what the car is doing, what it wants to do and where it's going. And that's really reassuring and makes it a very fun car to drive, especially on the track. Um, and obviously out on a really smooth road like this, a lovely smooth road, you can just be part of it and enjoy the experience, enjoy the views. And I just love doing this. It just grips and goes around with so much control. And you know, sometimes speed in a straight line isn't what it's about. It's the way a car drives and the way it feels and the excitement it gives you. So I've been driving along with the uh, roof down. It's obviously very, very hot today. But let's just for a moment slow the car down at 40 kilometers an hour, 25 miles an hour. You can do the roof uh, while you're driving. Like he says, I've just drifted over the speed, so drop it just down to under 40. And the roof will close, the rear hatch opens, the two-part folding roof will fold up over my head and click into place. It takes about 15 seconds to do it. You probably shift up a gear there, really. And, uh, Oh, I sped up and it opens, ah, oh, that's interesting. So if you sped up a little bit too much, it kind of reverses the process. But there we go. We can close it up, close the windows, and we're done. So the roof is closed, then you're driving in a, in a sort of hard top car. It's, it's not, you know, sort of over, over too much sound coming into the cabin. It's pleasant from that front. Um, and with the carbon tub, it doesn't really sort of change the dynamics. Traditionally, a convertible, you might feel it flexing more when you've got the roof down, but in here, it's not gonna make any difference. You've still got a nice amount of noise coming into the cabin without it being too much, and then up over a bump, but it rides that quite gently for how big a bump that actually was. Kind of on you go, and it's sort of business as usual, which is quite neat, but it is a lovely day, so I should probably reverse this. Slow back down, and back under 40, and then drop the roof again. And it goes, while you've got the roof up, by the way, you can actually just put down the rear window. So if it was raining, you could still have a little bit of air coming in. You could feel the uh, extra exhaust noise. Um, he says, I've sped up again. I'm not doing a good job of this. Right, slowing down and folding the roof back. I'm getting too carried away by how nice the road is. I just want to go and drive. But basically, 25 miles an hour is more than fine to do it without sort of obstructing things too much and then off you go again and it, it's just it's just hilarious so with a little straight in front of me somewhere if I can find one I'll uh, experience pressing the launch control button and see what that's about but just going along these roads you shift gear more than you want to to get the noise it has ample torque to pull away in a slightly higher gear you don't necessarily need to be going up and down perhaps as much as I am but why not just to enjoy the uh, Enjoy the drive. So here we go. We've got a little bit of a straight. Come down to a standstill. Press launch here. Hold the brake. Press full throttle. Boost building. Boost ready. Lift the brake, and away you go. And there was no slip there. The gearbox goes into automatic, and you're off. It's really, really fast. There is no question about that. So when you're using launch, it's automatic on the gearbox. You don't have to shift. And if, by the way, you're hearing any beeps, that's the performance shift cue, just sort of letting you know slightly before you're gonna hit the red line so that you can get that upshift. And I'll actually demonstrate that right now in a first gear here. 
Oh, we didn't quite hear it. Sorry, I shifted a touch too early. Got carried away. There we go. Heard it that time. Letting you know just when to shift for optimum shift points. But just going through that little S there, the turn it, you don't have to give much steering input. You just point it and around you go. And these roads are so lovely to be driving a car like this on. It's just heaven right now. This is, I mean, why a car like this is made is to enjoy a road like this on a day like this, in a location like this. And I mean, it's, it's doing everything magically. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. It's so light for a convertible V8 supercar. It's affordable relative to if you consider other options out there and what it's perhaps competing against in the market. And yeah, I mean, all round driving, just a, a lovely, lovely thing really. So <laughs> I don't really know what else I can say, but I'm gonna keep driving and keep enjoying. Now McLaren talk about how this car is more usable and how you can just sort of drive it every day. That's basically what it was sort of introduced for. So you've got things like the lift system, you just hold up the lower left stalk, up it goes, and you can cross that raised pedestrian crossing. But it, it's easy to position. You have pretty good visibility. You can see out forwards very clearly. The way the sort of front scuttle works gives you great sort of viewing in that direction. The uh, mirrors are sitting sort of quite far out from the car, so you've got a nice view behind, and you can see sort of in those side intakes, which just look awesome as well. Uh, it's got lots of convenience, technology, functionality, and to put the lift back down, you actually hold it up and then give it a press down and the vehicle will lower itself. In here, you've got the infotainment, you've got navigation that's working pretty well today, uh, following that, but you've got access to everything. If you went to reverse, you've got the rear view camera. Um, it's got obviously this great sound system, iPod, all of that side of things, everything you could want. So from a sort of technology and functionality point of view, it's very well sorted on that front. Uh, luggage capacity in the front boot is pretty decent as well. Um, if you want to use that for luggage, for touring, and generally it rides nicely. Obviously I'm cruising through town here in back in normal, normal, um, the standard kind of mode and it drives along very gently. If you come to a stop, um, it does actually have stop start as well. Um, I guess it's a bit hot or whatever right now, it's not running that, but it has stop start for efficiency. Um, I guess that's becoming pretty standard um, on anything now, why not, right? Um, but it just cruises along nicely. You get different display modes. So if you were to go into active and go uh, track mode on the powertrain, you get the sort of horizontal rev counter up towards the top, um, a sort of more aggressive shift, um, and generally um, slightly more sort of track orientated because you can see that rev counter right up at the top side of the screen. Um, the beeps, by the way, the lift system again to go over the bump um, so that I don't bang the front splitter. Um, yeah, so you know, just sort of see that in the bottom of your vision without having to divert your eyes down. You get a larger gear selector indicator as well. So all these things are quite neatly thought about, set up. You have lots of sort of menu settings you can go through on the dash that I can show you a little bit later on. It's easy and convenient to drive along. And in this yellow, I noticed driving through town that a lot of people uh, pay the car a bit of attention, uh, kind of unsurprisingly there. <laughs> you drive a bright yellow car like this um, through a little town that probably doesn't normally see a McLaren and they're probably wondering what on earth that thing is. But driving you know, with the roof up, I've got a bit of air conditioning, which I'm not gonna lie, I really rather needed. Um, it's letting me know that I'm low on fuel. Uh, I've been enjoying myself today. Unsurprisingly, who wouldn't in a car like this, right? But we're exiting the town here, so let's uh, let's keep it in track for now. Let's um, keep it manual. I like driving it manual. You just get a little bit more feel for it. And the car has the intake sound generator, so like the 12C and 650S, where there's sort of flaps, valves in the rear deck, which mean in the different modes you get different amounts of uh, engine noise allowed into the cabin. So it's not strictly, it's not fake noise. It's not sort of speakers creating noise. Um, it's very much real noise, just allowing more of it through. So in track, you hear more of that than you would if you were in sport or, or normal. Uh, but it's a, it's a, I, I'd say quite loud, kind of almost droney noise um, from one perspective uh, if you're just cruising along. But if you go up to seventh gear, the way it's set up, it's a very long seventh gear and you've got basically no pull. If you're cruising on the motorway at seventh, you do have to go down a gear uh, to actually get moving, which can be a little bit frustrating. But if you're automatic, obviously you just uh, start pressing down on the accelerator and it's going to do the rest for you. Um, driving along um, like this, there's no problem with torques. Uh, over 600 newton meters uh, torque, so all fine from that front. And yeah, it's just a comfortable, leisurely cruiser. I can feel the shifts are slightly more aggressive. You can manually have any combination of these settings that you 
one to disable stop start or you can just press that and go back into full normal normal and let it do it all its sort of regular thing again uh, but I'm going to continue driving. This has been rather wonderful so far today, but I'm going to head to our lunch stop where I can pull over and I'm going to show you a little bit more around the inside of the car. Let me quickly touch on things that I don't like. After all, it would only be fair to, to go over that. The first is the fuel consumption. I have been driving quite spiritedly, but I've done 175 kilometers on this tank. So that's, I guess, about 110 miles and I'm right at the reserve. So I've managed to get through a tank of fuel very quickly. That's a combination of, I guess, the car consuming a lot when you're driving excitingly, but also quite a small tank. Uh, which is one of the things I find with McLarens on road trips and from my experience of, I guess, owning four of them, I've learned quite a lot of, about uh, the cars. Also, cruising along like this, there is a little bit of that kind of annoying background drone. And one thing you know that you don't necessarily realize is I was in a 570S on the Autobahn and at sort of 300 kilometers an hour on the Autobahn, you know, 180, 190 miles an hour, you can really feel that the rear end goes very, very light. It doesn't have that kind of planted feel of cars with perhaps a bit more aerodynamics. And that's part of what makes it, I guess, so exciting uh, to drive and fun to play with. Uh, but it was quite, I guess, concerning once upon a time, having that feeling of the rear, just being that kind of light at that speed. Um, so a couple of kind of niggles, but overall, really, if you're in the market for £150,000 worth of supercar, I don't really know why you wouldn't buy this one. I think it has more excitement than the, you know, if it's a sort of one car thing, more excitement than, let's say, a Turbo S or an R8, um, more performance. Uh, more supercar drama in the sense of how it looks and basically it drives so well so so well that it is completely class leading I mean it's it's, it's part of you know it comes out of a company that's never going to make more than 5,000 cars a year that's highly exclusive bespoke custom you can go to MSO McLaren Special Operations and create the car how you want it it's something really special and you get a lot of car for your money you get an awful 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 lot um, so yeah maybe there are some small niggles maybe this could be slightly better um, the things I've mentioned but overall this thing is just a solid package it's an amazing drive a great sort of everyday supercar experience uh, this new category that didn't really exist before it looks the part it sort of plays the part it, it's just great I haven't talked too much about the other noises that the car makes and obviously it's turbocharged but it plays to that quite nicely if you give it sort of this gentle spurt you can hear it sort of spool up and then release and you kind of get some nice noises out of it as well while you do that sort of gentle little sort of crackles I'm not sure if you can hear much of that if I lower the rear window slightly you've got to be careful because the camera's on it you hear a bit more of that <laughs> excited it's quite a fun sound that it makes one thing I've been playing a little bit more with are the shift lights so the top of the display when you're in track and you've got this horizontal rev counter you have some performance shift lights but they have very complicated behavior and do different things uh, under different circumstances so if you accelerate gently they basically don't interrupt or demonstrate or show at all if however you have your foot flat to the floor like if I go down to first gear here you get a series of different lights to let you know to shift up get green red and blue lights basically three stage which is super easy to see because it's right at the top of the display letting you know to shift up between gears and one other thing I haven't actually mentioned up to this point is the traction control so in the middle of the handling toggle you have the ESC off button which if you give one short press puts it into ESC dynamic that basically stops how much traction control kind of throttle intervention the car gives you obviously 570 horsepower just to the rear wheels there's a lot of potential for things to go wrong very very quickly he says as the uh, fuel light blinks again at me um, but basically by having it in dynamic it doesn't sort of intervene quite so early which gives you a lot more fun from the car a lot less kind of frustration I suppose because you can find it kind of interrupting what you're doing a little bit earlier than you might want and one thing I would really like in my car as well is the ability to basically have it always in sport or dynamic but it does revert every time you turn it off but the view here by, by the way where I'm driving 
is just breathtaking. Um, he says dropping down to first gear just to see the shift lights again. Oh, that was a, an aggressive shift in track at the red line. The shift is a, a proper kick in the back, it properly sort of thumps you, uh, as I have just experienced. But the road opens up and away we go, and you get the, the beeps and the lights. It's just, it's, it's sort of that hit towards race car in a road car that's just fun and enjoyable to drive and this time I am actually really going to go towards uh, our destination so I can show you more around the inside just keep finding cool things to talk about here at the stop then we have another car to take a look around and I'll jump back inside in a moment show you a little bit more around the interior and the different specification of this spider but also behind it we have the GT and the 570s so if I come down the line you can see the, the variations in the different specifications and the way the rears of the car differ obviously here with the hatch that are open sideways to give you that extra luggage space uh, I think the car might even be open so I can quickly show you that very different interior here with the red leather but just back here behind the seat if you pull this lever in the 570 GT you get that extra storage space that you can use for luggage um, should you wish then behind us, at the very back, we have the uh, normal, if you could call it that, 570S, the coupe with these floating buttresses. But you can see that it's largely unchanged, just slightly sort of obviously changes for the, the new spider buttresses um, and that lower lip spoiler that I talked about earlier that's raised slightly further for the spider itself. So let's come back up to 570S spider. It's quite nice with this little lineup, just missing the 540C here. We can have a little look around the interior of this car, which like I said, has a different specification to the one I've been driving so far today. So it has the normal or, or sport seats rather than the buckets, uh, finished with the Alcantara and the yellow sort of sport uh, design finish. If I step in here um, and start it up, although actually one thing to point out is you close the door and you get comfort entry. So if you pull this stalk, it would return the uh, steering wheel to the last position. Um, or you can press OK to cancel it if you want to leave that as it was. Uh, the electric handbrake's down there as well, and you've got an electric uh, steering column adjuster here. So it just makes getting in and out even easier, all those kind of things. But let's start this up. There we go. Um, time for parking sensors, which you can do by one press uh, of the mirror control there. Let's have a little look at the display here. So this is in the normal display mode where you have that central rev counter, the speedometer in the middle. At the right hand side you've got your fuel, your temperatures, and on the left you have the sort of trip information. But if you press active dynamics uh, and you put the powertrain into track mode, so here are all the sort of controls I mentioned earlier. Uh, P for powertrain, H for handling, ESC if you want to change that, launch if you want to use that. You can see the way here the uh, dashboard display changes. So that's the uh, normal or sport mode, that is the track mode. So you've got tyre information on the right hand side, fuel as a percentage, the larger gear indicator underneath the rev counter, and then the trip uh, things to the left. At the bottom you can see the handling and powertrain, so sport and track, or if you press uh, dynamic you can see how ESC DIN comes on there. Then using the left stalk you bring up the uh, additional menu, so you can see at the left here you've got various different things you can go through, uh, the trip, um, home, bring up the reversing camera which is very nicely high resolution right in front of you there which works a lot better than the earlier system McLaren's had um, in the center because it's just easier to see to be honest. Um, you can bring up uh, your nav commands and destination stuff, you've got your settings, if you want to go through the display setup, lighting, vehicle, you've got all sorts of things here. Intake sound generator, valet mode, performance shift queue, navigation, your usual kind of settings you'd expect to find um, in a car like this. Uh, yeah, lots and lots to play with, which I always quite like because who doesn't enjoy going through different things and then your lift system. If you want to do it manually, you can go into the mode there or like I said earlier, you can just hold this stalk up and it will raise and uh, then go back down again. So that's all pretty uh, easy and self-explanatory. Looking around a little bit more, um, obviously window controls down here. It's all kind of futuristic in design. You've got four air vents, two, uh, two facing at each occupant of the car. The floating nav stack here, quite hard to see with the light on it I'm afraid. Um, very bright sun behind me at the moment but everything uh, that we know from previous gens of Iris, um, you've got the home button down here as well as the ability to go through different things. So you've got some apps and stuff you can play with, you've got the browser, uh, if we go back obviously you've got navigation, uh, your phone, your media, 
all of that side of things. And this system actually works pretty well to give it credit. The navigation is brilliant. Um, from my experience of using it, it just generally works really nicely. Continuing down, cup holder down here in front of the 570S plaque at the back. Um, another little storage area. Then you've got your active dynamics panel. Then you've got the button to open the bonnet, uh, lock the car, drive, neutral, reverse. The button for the rear window and the button for the roof. So you can raise that rear window, as you can see, um, which is the sort of glazed wind deflector. Or you can uh, do the entire roof um, with that side as well. Then for the seats in here, you have controls, memory seats, and then the other functionality is kind of hard to uh, show you. It's down in here, um, but you have different buttons for moving the various parts. Um, and then, yeah, that's, I guess, most of what there is to show you on the inside. Uh, more sort of cup holders and storage back here. Then in the armrest, you've got a couple of USB ports, three USB ports back there. Um, and uh, behind that, you've got um, a strap for just, I guess, popping anything in back there. Did I close that? Yeah. So everything inside works very nicely. Um, a couple of gentle blips up. You can hear those uh, turbos doing their thing. But let's just turn that off for the moment. Silence. Uh, open the door. And I will step out for a moment, uh, letting me know that I've left the key in the car, but obviously that's no issue at the moment in these circumstances. So, just to sort of last little walk around almost, just taking in the car, final little bits here in the sunshine. For the bonnet, if you press the button on the key or the button inside the car, there is actually no latch in here. That was one of the cool things about the uh, sports series. There's no latch, it opens up. You've got enough room in there for some small luggage. Uh, nice and easy. And um, yeah, just click it down, give it a good press. It latches into place. So decent storage even in the Spider. So I guess it's time to kind of conclude my drive with McLaren's 570S Spider. And it was always going to be a winning formula. The 570S is a great car. Take the roof off, you're open to the air. It's a wonderful driving experience. I love convertibles and this has done it in such a great way. One thing, quite a lot of wind buffeting that goes on from the car, but that doesn't really detract from the experience because that's why you have the top down anyway. And everything about driving it, especially on these kind of roads, the way it turns in, the way it handles is brilliant. More than enough power. Um, when the Sport Series sort of came out, it felt like it was quite close to the 650S in the class above it. But now that we have the 720S, you can kind of see why the Sport Series, Super Series divide almost works um, and how the cars fit into different classes. But if you weren't sort of comparing this to a 720S, this is a supercar. This is a proper piece of kit, a proper piece of equipment and an awesome driving experience. It looks great the way the carbon comes through the back between the buttresses, the whole sort of shape of the rear deck fits very naturally and it's actually really quite similar to the original design sketches that we've seen uh, from way back, from back in 2012 or so. Uh, so they stayed true to that, which is always cool as well. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this one up for there. I hope you've enjoyed the video, seeing inside out the new McLaren 570S Spider. Thanks as always for watching guys. Make sure you're subscribed for plenty more and I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers.